right, this is Olive. I have 39 specific books dedicated to femininity. And in this video, I wanted to share with you some of my eight most favorite books from that collection and give you some quotes. I wanted to read you a quote from each of them. Let's start with my favorite one. This one comes from the Bible. And I'm going to read to you out of Proverbs some feminine ways. In Proverbs 16, 24, it says, Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. This means, ladies, we should always have sweet and pleasant words to share with men and women alike. The next one from Proverbs 15, 1 says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. This means that in our conversation, a woman should always have soft words to return to the speaker. She should not incite herself or allow herself to be incited by the words of another, but change the course of that conversation through her soft words. The last one comes from Proverbs 24, 3 through 4. And it says, Through wisdom a house is built, understanding it is established, and by knowledge the chamber shall be filled with precious and pleasant things. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. This basically means that a woman builds a home out of a house she is given. She is the one to use wisdom and understanding in order to build a strong foundation in her home. She is the one who is to decorate it with the knowledge that she is taught from the Word of God, from her time with God, and from other sources that she seeks. The next one comes from what French women know. Everyone has this perception of the French woman being very sexy and somewhat sensual. Well, let's read and discover what makes them so. The author writes, it is this, less is more. When less is more, you often get more with less, more passion with less planning, more love and intimacy with less information and grief, more freedom with less fretting. And yes, while we're at it, more style, with less stuff. This is basically teaching us not to get rid of everything, but to live in the simplicity of flowing with the moment and not desiring a plethora of things in order to be fully you, in order to experience and enjoy your daily life, whether you be out on a date or at home. A lot of women like to plan not be spontaneous, need to know the background and information of the next person, but with the French it's not necessarily so, we can learn from them. We don't need to plan everything, but we can live in spontaneity. We can go with the flow and change with the current time and season. We can also dwell with another without knowing every single thing about them. The next one comes from the essence of love. This book is about fragrance, aphrodisiacs, and aromatherapy amongst lovers. The author writes, The use of aromatics for seduction became so rife in Europe that the English Parliament of 1770 even passed an act intended to protect men from being beguiled into marriage by the fair sex. She quotes, all women of whatever age, and my doggy wants to be in the video. He is so left out if he is not here too. <laughs> he doesn't like me to record without him. So I'll share now. All women of whatever age that shall from and after such act impose upon, seduce, and betray into matrimony any of his subjects by the use of sense, 
paints and cosmetics shall incur the penalty of the law enforced against witchcraft and like misdemeanors that marriage shall stand null and void. So we learn from this back in the late 1700s, men considered embellishments of women, the adornment of women, or the accessories of women, uh, an act of witchcraft in order to control a man or entice him or to beguile him into something that he might not have ordinarily gotten into. Now, of course, being a woman, I disagree, but from this, we can learn and understand that using these tools to accentuate our femininity are very powerful. These tools of cosmetics and fragrances and paints, and of course, now fashion, can influence our favor with men. <laughs> the next one comes from a book of secrets for women. The author writes, a man wants you to love him for who he really is and not a fantasy of what you want him to be. He's not perfect. Dispense with thoughts of your fella being insensitive and unloving. That's not true. He is sensitive. He is loving. He just expresses love differently from you. So differently that you might not be aware he is expressing love. This informs me that a man expresses love so much differently than a woman and through our expression, our interpretation of that man's expression may be skewed. We have to come outside of ourselves and understand our men through how they express love and through their point of view. There's much to learn here. The next one is called Fascinating Womanhood and it was very popular during the, the 60s and 70s and the author writes in this, to understand the masculine viewpoint, learn to view the ideal through his eyes. His ideas of femininity and feminine perfection are different from your own. The things we women admire in each other are rarely attractive to men. On the other hand, the things the average woman ignores or condemns in another woman are sometimes just the characteristics which make her fascinating to men. Women are blind to their own charms, which makes it difficult for them to realize what a man wants. That tells me everything we understand about a man through our own perception is not correct. We have to understand them through their own perception and ask them. That's one easiest way to understand them. Ask them what they find unique in you or unique in a woman what they desire, what pleases them. The next one comes from the infamous book called The Rules 2. The rules are based upon basic truths of human nature. Everyone wishes we could be more open and honest with men in the early stages of dating or ask men out, but these wishes are pure fantasy. To think men and women should treat each other exactly alike as platonic friends do, Dutch treat, tit for tat, even Stephen, is unrealistic. In the romantic world, there's only one way that truly works. The man must be attracted to and then pursue the woman. It simply doesn't work any other way. And then she writes of turning a friend into a lover now that you want him, you may be tempted to go other extremes. Call him all the time, talk about your change of heart, refer to him as your soulmate, talk about marriage or the future, and drive him away. Men don't like to be overwhelmed, even by women they like. We can learn from this not to overwhelm, not to overwhelm men 
with our own plans and perceptions and goals for the future. If they ask us, we tell them simply and leave it at that, but we don't give them every detail, unnecessary details of depth of all the things you desire out of him in life. Anybody, male or female, would be overwhelmed by that. What we are to simply do is allow the relationship to be. Go with the flow. Do not try to steer its direction, for it's not yours to steer anyway. Yours is to either accept and receive or deny and reject. Let him steer it and trust in the Lord for your relationship and future. The last book is a little bit of a taboo book and it's called The Sensuous Woman. And the author writes, there are four keys to sensuality. Number one, heightened sensitivity. Number two, appetite. Number three, the desire to give. And number four, sexual skill. Now, I don't promote premarital sex and my views on that are for another video on discussion, but um, I would say number four should be saved for married couples. These four ways are great ways to explore your sensuality and to increase conscious awareness of it. One example she gives to explore your sensuality is through dance, which is personally my favorite. She writes, the old-fashioned way where he holds you in his arms. Let your body melt into his and let him completely as you. Concentrate on the feel of his body next to yours, the coordination of his muscles as he moves you around the floor. If you close your eyes, it will help you tune out visual distractions and allow you to be aware only of him and the music. So lovely put and a great place to end. Thank you for listening to quotes from the eight books I've chosen from my personal library on femininity.